everyone, I'm Jodie and in this video I'm just going to be teaching everyone how to hand strip their wirehead terrier at home. I appreciate I have made a hand stripping video before but it's very very long and not very concise so I thought I'd make another one that's a little bit shorter, less embarrassing and just gets to the point, gets it over and done with and isn't such a boring watch. Stripping your dog as opposed to clipping them is great because it keeps the wiry, dense outer coat which is very protective in wet weather uh, as we have in England all the time. <laughs> but unfortunately not many groomers do hand strip and of the ones that do, often it's very expensive so not all owners can afford this. In this video we're just going to be going over how to do a basic hand strip this isn't really for a show dog as such, this is just the quickest and most easy way to strip your dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be stripping a Border Terrier, it's actually Bramble's little brother. And I say little because he was the runt of the litter, but he's quite a big boy now. But this also applies to pretty much any wirehead terrier breed. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Here are the tools that I'm going to be using. You won't need all of these, um, but I'm going to go through and show you how to use every single one of them. What I would say, and this is the top tip, definitely get yourself some grooming chalk, because this is so useful. I have the powdered version here, but you can also get the solid version, which works just as well. Something else you need are nail clippers. Don't forget to clip your dog's nails, because if they get too long, it can be really, really painful for the dog to walk, and they can become ingrown. I would recommend getting yourself a pair of scissors, you don't use the scissors that much when you're grooming your dog. It's great for trimming the inside of the ears and around the paws to keep it nice and sanitary. A metal tooth comb is just good for when your dog is fluffy. Just give your dog a little brush through and make sure they're not getting knotted. Thinning scissors are good for dogs that are very sensitive around the legs and the chest and the stomach because it means that you don't have to actually strip, you can just use the thinning scissors over that instead. And finally, a stripping knife, which you can use to thin out the coat to make it easier to strip. Um, I personally would not recommend using a stripping knife all over the body as it can cut the fur, but it's not the end of the world if it does. So here's the needs pile, and here's the recommendance pile. Start off by getting your chalk and just covering your dog with it. The chalk's great because it adds to the grip when you groom a dog because it is very harsh on your fingers and it can give you blisters. I've had so many blisters from grooming dogs and the chalk just makes the job a lot quicker and easier, which is good for you, your fingers, and also the dog because it's less stressful. Once you've chalked up your dog, just use your thumb and finger to start plucking the hair away. You know when your dog's ready to start stripping because the hair will come out nice and easily. Always pluck downwards so you're not pulling the hair against the roots because that can be a little bit painful for the dog. I start at the top of the neck and I work my way down the body and I leave the legs, the stomach, the chest and the head and the tail until the end. The actual bulk of the body is really, really easy to strip in most cases. If your dog is really struggling with it then it's probably better to get it clipped once you've weighed out the pros and the cons. But if your dog is easy to strip on its body, then just get that over and done with to start off with because that's the nice easy part. Once you're done with the body, you can start making your way down to the legs. Now, a lot of dogs are very sensitive on their legs and their feet and their stomachs. So what I do here is I will strip down until your dog becomes uncomfortable. If your dog shows signs of discomfort, then stop, get out your scissors and scissor from there on. You can also use the stripping knife just to thin out the coat a little bit so it becomes easier to strip. I 
I use the scissors just to neaten up the toes and get the hair out from between the toes because that can get grass seeds and other things caught into it which isn't very comfortable for the dogs. As I said before, don't neglect your dog's claws. You have to trim your dog's claws regularly. Just be careful because they do have a little vein in it called the quick, which runs through the claw. So make sure you don't cut that. Cool, so now we have all the body and the legs done. We just have the tail, the chest and the head left to go. The tail is super duper easy again. It's just slightly different because of the shape, but you just pull the hair out as before. With the underside of it, just flip the hairs backwards so you can see which ones are long and then you can pull them out carefully as well. Around the bum area you can either use scissors just to make it nice and clean or you can use your thumb and finger just to pull the hair out again depending on how comfortable your dog is with that. And to finish up it's the head and the chest area. This bit is a little bit harder to get out sometimes and the dog can find it quite uncomfortable so what I do is I just hold the muzzle in my hands, don't squeeze it, just hold it so that it's nice and stable. If the dog does try to pull away, let them, because you don't want the dog to hate being groomed. At the end of the day, this has to be a very positive experience. All the way through, give your dog treats and praise, of course. It is the same theory, but you just have to be a bit more careful. So what I do is I use my nails more than the bulk of my finger, just to get the hair out nice and finely. Around the beard, I used thinning scissors on Archie just because he does find it uncomfortable and sometimes it pulls at the mouth. With Bramble and other dogs that I've groomed, I haven't and I just used my thumb and finger in the same way to strip away the fur in the muzzle. With the eyebrows, just be careful that you're not pulling the eyelid too much, so make sure you're holding the skin in place when you're doing that. The ears, again, is exactly the same, thumb and finger. Just use the nail more than the bulk of the finger just to get the fine hairs out. And then you can use your scissors to clean out the inside of the ear. Finally, we have the chest left to go, which some dogs do find a little bit of discomfort in, so you just have to do nice, gentle movements with your thumbs and your fingers to get this hair out. Next, you can have a terrier pad or a Ferminator. Um, with a Ferminator, you have to wait until your dog is completely stripped to use it because it can actually damage the outer wiry coat. This is not to replace stripping. This is just to get rid of all the dead undercoat once you finish stripping, as I'll show you. The terrier pad does sort of the same thing, but it's just not as thorough. Thank you for watching, and I hope this was nice and informative for you. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, to share with your friends, and to subscribe to Crazy Pop on YouTube.